In this daily drop, I'm going to address some questions about my audio setup in my last production for Steadicam, so let's go. All right, everybody, here we are winding up the week, episode 120 of the Daily Drop. And this is the last one I'm going to do related to my production I did for Steadicam last weekend because there were still a couple of questions related to how I was booming my mics in that situation. And I want to talk about why I did it and also how I did it. So you'll see here in the top-down view, I have this bar here. This one happens to be by Newer with two E's, but there are a whole bunch of these out on the internets for you to acquire. They're not expensive. Usually they're about $15 to $25 for something like this, US. And we live in, as you probably know, a 3816 quarter 20 5 eighths world. In the music world, when you're attaching to a lot of those stands, it would be a 5 eighths. So the first thing I need to do, because that's not standard for a boom pole, usually a boom pole is a 3 8 16, what I'm going to do is I am going to, or a, a quarter 20, depending on how you're setting up, and you'll see right now that I'm going to a quarter 20 for a reason, and that's because I'm going from one thing to another. This is a 5 eighths to quarter 20 uh, basically adapter. So that's going to get me to that mount. Usually if I was going to go straight to a boom pole, this would be a 5 8 to a 3 8 16. But what I like to do so I have a lot of flexibility in terms of adjustability is take a ball mount like this. I'm a big fan of these Monfrotto ones because they're just so rock solid. They're not the cheapest in the world, but they last forever. And that's a quarter 20 on the end of that. So that's why I went 5 eighths to quarter 20. And now I have this basically set up and now I have full adjustability in terms of the bar. And this bar is fixed width with these 3 8 16 male um, threads, but you can get ones that are more adjustable. I'll put at least one of them in the description for this episode. But this is basically how I'm getting to my boom pole because on the bottom of this uh, ball mount, we have 3816. So there's that little unit there. And then we have these two suckers right here, which are two shock mounts. These ones happen to be by road, but there are a lot of other ones on the market. And the two mics that I actually had in these in production were two NTG5s. I've got one of them up here, and then I have another one. These are the NT55s. I didn't wind up using these because even though they didn't have a lot of pickup in the back, they were a broader pickup pattern, which can be an advantage, but it was a very live room, and the NTG5s were more directional and we're picking up less of that ambient noise overall. So I chose those. All right, so basically uh, we're just gonna go ahead and thread these to shock mounted mics. Of course, with a bar like this, you could also set up a stereo recording by crossing them, so on and so forth. Mine were basically just straight on. So I'm just gonna get these onto the bar. And um, other than that, really not much else. Now, the whole purpose of this, of course, was because I didn't really know going into this shoot what my talent's range of motion was. I knew what we were trying to do, but I didn't know how much range of motion we were gonna have. So then I was gonna set this up, or I did set this up, so that these were pointed down. And it gave me some range of motion for talent. Again, if this bar was a little um, wider, a little longer, then I'd have even more range of motion. But I can tell you this, we favored um, this one right here where the talent was, but there was one particular time at the end of day, I did not notice it, where when talent came back in with the whole steady cam rig, he obviously shifted slightly. I probably compensated in terms of where he was in the frame so that it was similar to the previous take. And when I started editing and I started to use the main mic that I was using for everything else, I realized that there was a considerable change in terms of the audio. So I went over to the second mic and lo and behold, he had shifted into sort of that lobe, that pickup. And when I used that, it all matched. It was a beautiful thing. So in the end, just for that one take, 
it was actually worth doing this in the production because it sounded a little muddier. I didn't really like the way it was sounding, even though I was trying to make adjustments to this microphone, switch to this one, solve the problem. This is the whole thing. It's not complicated. And I'll put some links to the stuff that I used for this. I hope that helped. And just remember to also check out my other episode where I talk about where you're pointing that microphone, because if you're pointing it here, you're going to have problems in post-production where your levels are going up and down, when people are turning left, right, up and down. It gets ugly sometimes out there in the audio world. We've got to do what we can to make it better. Again, as always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to and to. And I'll see you on the next episode of The Daily Drop.